Good morning. We are Ethereum and Arm. First of all, thank you all for being here early morning. And um, uh, well, we are running a validator from zero. We are Ethereum and Arm from Spain. Um, uh, hope you find this workshop uh, very useful for you all. And we have a little surprise in the end, so I truly recommend you and deeply recommend you to stay till the end. So Mr. Diego Lozada and my colleague Fernando, they will run this uh, workshop. Uh, so let's go for it and work a little bit. Thanks. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Uh, before getting started with the, with the workshop, a little intro of, of what we do. Um, yeah, this is why we are here. I mean, uh, we want people to run nodes at home, to run to a stake at home, whether it is uh, by uh, running an Ethereum on our main match or, or by running an app node or by running a client by yourselves. Uh, whatever. Uh, it's very, very important for, for the decentralization of, of, the, of the network. So this is key. And, and that's it. Uh, if I ask, uh, if, if I may ask, how many of you uh, run a, a, a node at home? Oh. Not bad. <laughs> Validator? Great. And with these kinds of devices, with uh, low power and, and resource constraints devices, is uh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> very good. So, what do we provide? We provide a plug and play image, so it is very easy to start. It just you just need to flash a micro SD and and start uh, the device. And pretty much it configures everything, and you have available all the uh, Ethereum clients uh, for start. And you can run on a full node in, in a few commands. We will see this uh, later. Okay. As I was saying, uh, this is what the, the image uh, does. So uh, it's quite quite easy. Uh, current available for Raspberry Pi and Rock 5. Um, Rock 5 is not yet available, okay. It's been released this month, I think. Um, why run a, a, an Ethereum node on, on these devices? Well, it's affordable. I mean, uh, it's cheaper than uh, other, other solutions. Uh, it spends little power. Uh, they are performant. These devices is, are powerful, uh, particularly now the, the Rock 5 is, is a power, super powerful device. They are focusing on one task, meaning uh, no graphical environment, no web browsing, uh, nothing. Just it's focused on running a node. So you have all the resources available for that. Uh, it's small. You can put it in any corner of your of your house next to the router or, or whatever and uh, it's based on on the ARM so it's good for uh, from a security perspective uh, running several architectures so it's good uh, this is what the image does uh, again automatic installation includes all major clients uh, the client runs uh, through systemd devices, so you are pretty much easy to to uh, to manage. And we include monitoring dashboards uh, based on Grafana. Well, what happened post match? Yeah, uh, hardware requirements got a little higher, uh, so we are getting some issues with the with the Raspberry Pi 4. Actually, uh, we just uh, being able to to sync uh, a node with get unstable and, and Nimbus, I think this will get better in about several weeks because uh, the client teams are working on on improving the performance and and doing some optimizations. We'll see. 
uh, the ROC5 is running great. Uh, I'll show you later uh, our validator at home. It's running uh, Besu and Telco, and it's doing great. So this device can run pretty much every client, uh, every Ethereum client. It's, it's super powerful. Yeah, uh, this is what I was saying. Uh, get unstable plus Nemos. This is, is the only combo that, that actually works. And uh, the Rock 5, see that uh, it's powerful, 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, NBME, uh, 8 cores, pretty much uh, amazing. So uh, I'm taking over now to Fernando uh, before starting the uh, the, the uh, node setup because uh, we get a lot of question that is uh, important for us. Uh, uh, why should I trust your image? It's an image. They are binaries. So Fernando will walk you through our uh, repo to do, to do this uh, yourself if you want. Uh, how we package uh, all clients, how we uh, make the, the image. So, okay, let's yeah, go. I think the, the first question is, should you trust us? And the short answer is no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't trust us. We are going to provide you uh, all the different uh, clients uh, in a way of a Debian package. And you could ask, okay, why I should, uh, should, should trust you? Uh, how do I know that uh, you are not changing anything in the code or you are not changing anything in the package in order to trying to tell me something or doing anything bad? But the short answer is you could do it at home using cloning this repository in a very easy way. That's our main goal. You could do all the same that we do and create your own image without, without need anything from us, only running this, this uh, repo. Uh, Sorry. Uh, we will document this, okay? It's, uh, it's in our to-do list to uh, open a, a develop section for you to, to follow the follow a guide and, and make all of this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first time we're trying to do all in a very automatic way, very easy. And we provide a background image. I don't know if you know background. Vagrant is a product uh, from HashiCorp, open source product, who tries to, to create a developer environment in a very easy way, in a very programmatic way. Uh, I can show you our, um, here, oh no, I can see that. Not here. Okay. file. Can you do you see anything? Okay. Uh, that's, that's the vegan file. The vegan file, the only thing that's do is uh, prepare an environment in order to create all the packages. Okay, it's a very easy and pragmatic way to, to do so. Uh, you ask uh, to vegan to create a Ubuntu machine and install all the software that you need to create the image. Uh, all the packages are based on the work of this guy from Jordan Caesar, I don't know if I pronounce okay his surname, but this guy creates a very nice way to create, to automate the creation of a Debian package or a RPM package or whatever you know. So using uh, his work, uh, is, uh, for us it's, it's very, very easy to create uh, any, any package. So if you clone this rep our repository and uh, do sim uh, a very simple command, big run up, uh, you create a bigger machine with all the code inside. For example, here, here you have, you have you will have to enter in this uh, 
directory, FPM package builder, and inside you will be uh, a folder for any client that we support. Uh, for example, you should see the get um, the folder here. It's a um, very small and simple uh, make file. And with this make file, you will create the same package that we are providing you in our repository. Uh, there is a um, the simple idea is go to GitHub and the, from the people from Go Ethereum, uh, obtain the version, obtain the, the uh, subversion that the package uh, has, and create a RPM. The only thing that you are going to do is download the latest binary, the latest binary for the RM, uh, for, for ARM, um, uh, with this binary and this uh, folder structure, you will create a, a Debian package. The only add for our site is this small uh, system that you need in order to, to be more easy to, to use uh, the software. You could do system start, system stop, system restart for the software. All the configuration also is included. It's a, a basic configuration. Simply you will launch um, uh, get and we launch, uh, we will launch get with um, this flag, and it is expensive because we use uh, later Prometheus and Grafana in order to show you the your ticket statistics. And you could see uh, later in our Grafana uh, environment. It's also included in the image. So you could simply go to our repo. A simple, a simple get if uh, GitHub is not, well, probably the speed of the Wi-Fi is not fast enough to see it, but the only thing that is going to be is open, a, download the latest uh, binary and create a Debian package. This Debian package we will provide you in a, in a form of our Debian repository, but you, if you don't trust us, you could do it yourself or you could check if the um, if the M thinks, uh, MD5 sum is the same from our repository and your uh, your packets, and we'll see, we are going no, no, we will not change anything in the in the official binary. Okay, let's start. I don't know if only 14 seconds. And now uh, the the skip will do all for you. It will create your your Debian package, and you could use it offline and not trust our repository. It's simply your uh, uh, official binary with a systemd uh, file, systemd unit. Also, we provide the same for the for the SD image. We went to wait these few seconds. Okay, and in the end, you will be, uh, we already done it before training, but here you will have your Debian package for the get. It's very simple, it's very easy, it's not uh, uh, anything strange here. It's only uh, a Debian package in order to create it more easily. And for the, for the, uh, for the Ubuntu image that we're using for all of three devices, it's almost the same thing. A small make package, make file, sorry, that uh, here we will download the latest uh, Ubuntu available for for ARM and uh, unzip it. As, well, here we disable the automatic calibration because uh, if we don't do this, uh, the first room is very, very slow because Ubuntu will try to upgrade in the first room and probably if the images are a bit old, uh, we will last for very, very minutes or even hours. And the only add that we do is add this small RC local. In this RC local is all the image you call it. Here um, uh, is uh, all the logic. We will create a partition for you. We will create all the needed users and permissions in order to this uh, package room with uh, the configuration that we made. And in, I think in a very simple way, you could do it at home. Do not need uh, ask for anything. 
you could create your own image, you could add your own uh, software if you want, you could create your own package if you don't trust uh, our, our repository. Um, that's the thing that, okay, you shouldn't uh, trust us, but you can uh, see if we are doing anything wrong or we are cheating, doing it at home in a very easy way. Okay. Okay, thanks, Fernando. <laughs> Let's uh, fire up Node. Uh, we will follow the official, uh, our official documentation. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward uh, process. Uh, first, you will need to download our image. We, we already did, because, you know, here. We unzip it. Uh, all instructions are, are, are here. Uh, you see, unzip. We will flash. I have a, a here a micro SD. So, uh, once the, was the uh, flash process uh, end, uh, you just need to make sure that uh, you uh, attach uh, an Ethernet cable, the, the SSD, in, in the port, uh, in the blue port, the blue port. Yes, and uh, you put the macro SD in, in the slot, and just that, uh, power the device, and the, on the first boot, our uh, boot screen will Reconfigure everything and install all the, all the software necessary to run a node and creating the, uh, the keys for the validator. Uh, so uh, once you, uh, uh, after maybe 10 minutes, the, the device will restart and you will be uh, on a recent, uh, um, on a machine that is uh, pretty much configured for, for running a, an Ethereum node. Okay. So uh, let's wait for for it for, for it to finish. So I may be I don't know how much can take this. Okay. So uh, we will be uh, connecting to uh, an AWS machine because uh, we need to, to connect uh, remotely, and it's more comfortable because it's, it's, uh, it's more, um, it's more, it's, it's quicker, uh, sorry, it's, it's uh, faster. And, but it's ARM-based, it's exactly the same that you will uh, get with this, uh, with a Raspberry Pi or, or, a, or a Rock 5. Okay. We also provide um, an AWS image if you want to try uh, or image in, in, in your account is uh, uh, one click away from. It's just. Launching a command, I will show you um, the config file. So you can see all flags that it's needed to, to run a client. Again, the token. Uh, the checkpoint in, I was saying, is this URL. So let's launch uh, the service. And let's see what happens. So it's going to start. Uh, you see that uh, already a uh, lot uh, block and state from the checkpoint. Uh, it says that, uh, yes, there's uh, an execution endpoint, but it's not synced. It's not synced. So uh, it's going to start telling uh, the execution line what to do. Okay. And that's it for fire up a node, you have a, an execution layer, 
uh, a consensus layer. You start the both services, and with our image, it's pretty much uh, what you need to do to, to launch a node, okay? Is that easy? Uh, again, uh, like I said uh, in the intro, uh, Raspberry Pi now just thinks with um, get unstable and like how it, uh, sorry, and Nimbus. Uh, because, yeah, uh, post-merge, uh, hardware requirements went, went uh, a little higher, so uh, we need to wait, I think, uh, a little uh, for optimizations to come from, from, from client teams. And I think uh, it will be able, again, to sync uh, with other clients, but we'll see. Uh, we are not sure of that. Uh, the ro the ROG uh, 5 is running fine. I mean, post-merge, pre-merge, it's a very, very powerful device, and it, it's, uh, it's running great. So, um, let's go to the validator. Um, as you can see, you just need to create uh, the keys and, and running a command to, to import the, the validator keys in the, in the, in, in the consensus layer. So, um, we can go to the staking path from the Ethereum Foundation. You can see here all the steps that you need to follow. And uh, pretty much everything that it's here, it's already done. I mean, an execution client is configured. You can ch uh, choose from, from all of these four. Again, you are good. You can choose uh, from any, any client uh, as well. Again, you are done. Uh, validators, let's uh, try a, a one validator. Again, this, um, you now need a, a, a tool for creating the, the validator keys. It's already installed. Uh, actually, it's, um, it's this one, possible. So, uh, we can launch this command. Straightforward as Ethereum account, as Ethereum user. Okay. Uh, that's a English, English. Sorry, password. This is a password for uh, your key store. Okay. Yeah. This is. These are your keys. Please don't lose this, okay? Write them down and keep them because uh, without this, you will not be able to withdraw and that could be a problem. <laughs> set up a projector and show to everyone in the room, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is... <laughs> uh, okay, let's confirm, okay? These are... Uh, as you can see, it's power. Now you can you have uh, the validator keys here. The deposit data that you will upload in the 32th uh, deposit, and a key store where your keys are. Okay, so let's import them. In that house account. All right, so we have the uh, validator keys already set up. So we just need to start the service. Um, here a an address. 
Rogers. I have one here. It's one. It's ours. Let's start again. Okay, here it is. And uh, one validator available. So you just have to go here and know what you're doing. Upload here uh, this. Um, This file, deposit, okay, it's this one. Uh, it's explained here, I mean, uh, it's much, you know, you have two options. Or I can maybe uh, copy and paste here, okay. For you to see. Fine. And now the more fun uh, process that it's uh, sending 32 if <laughs> and pray for <laughs> to, uh, to the gods that uh, it's going to be fine because it's a it's a lot of cash. I mean, <laughs> and that's all. I mean, uh, it's uh, as you as you can see, it's, it's a simple process. Uh, if you have uh, some Linux skills, it's, it's fine. I mean, uh, but you can do it uh, without any other skills as well uh, if you follow the documentation. And I think uh, we are done with this. Let's see if our process are running. I have house, I have fine. So, um, the rock five, yes. Let's connect to the rock five. Yes, we, we are going to show our uh, validator running, uh, I think, three validators right now with uh, rock five. And with rock five right now is cheaper than the Raspberry Pi 4 even, and probably twice or three times powerful. So uh, our okay. recommendation right now is going to for uh, a rock five whenever it's available again. You can see here. The motherboard. It's running a rock chip kernel. And you can see here two Java um, processes uh, that are uh, based on Teku. So let's see. This is a validator. You see that it's actually publishing uh, at the stations. It's running right now. It's running fine. And uh, the Rock 5 is, is running both uh, both clients in, in uh, uh, at the same time and, and with no problem at all. I mean, it's a super powerful device. Uh, you can we can see a bit as well. Now, you see, 
it's in sync, it's working perfectly. And again, this device is not uh, yet available, but I think uh, we uh, have contact with the manufacturer. I actually, uh, this is a prototype from March, I think, March, March April, I don't know. And uh, they are already releasing a batch. Uh, we have five uh, on its way. I mean, uh, uh, I think that it will be available pretty soon. And super powerful device, super uh, a useful device for, for running a, an Ethereum node. And hope they release the, uh, it uh, this month. Okay, so uh, what's left? Uh, the last thing. Okay. Now I will uh, post a tweet. Yeah. Okay. Um, as I told you at the beginning of this workshop, um, there is a raffle right now. So if you want to participate, uh, Diego is going to post uh, in Twitter. I already did. Oh, you already did? Okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, if you follow us in at Ethereum and Arm, um, you just need to post something like a comment. No, there we go. What did I tell you before? What is that? Okay, you have to post. I attend to the workshop and I want to win something. <laughs> Okay, that something is a Raspberry uh, P4, okay? And um, from now on, put the counter. In three minutes, uh, we're going to stop. Five. Five minutes, really. Okay, in five minutes, we're going to stop, and somebody wins something today. Okay? Five minutes. It's... He told me five minutes. We just did it. So, just only three? And? Yeah, five. Okay, confirm, five. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I was going to tell you. Uh, does anybody here, I'm pretty sure that uh, anyone here has any question or? Yeah, okay. Uh, what will the uh, Rock 5 sell for? How much would it be? Uh, $189, but you need uh, an NVMe disk. So it will be a little higher. And you need a power device and a micro SD. I think it should be between one fair, fair hundred and fifty or four hundred, I mean cost total cost, I mean, of the note. Hi. Uh, well I have four questions. So yeah. I'll try to be quick. Uh, do you recommend using uh, a dual US instance against uh, running your No. Okay. No, no, not at all. Okay. No, this this was for for the workshop. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, okay. We don't we don't uh, want uh, people running nodes on AWS because that that's not a uh, decentralized way of of doing this. So no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what advantages do you see in running our own validators instead of delegating the staking? Well, because it's very important for the network actually. Uh, uh, there is a problem with centralization in these large pools. I mean, it's very important that people stay at home because if one pool or several pools want to take over the, the network, there is uh, this uh, other army of nodes that is from the people, I mean, and it's very, very important to fight against this uh, kind of attacks to, to stay at home. Okay. And what measures do you take at home to ensure uptime? To ensure uptime? Well, we have a, a, how is I? S -I, -S -A -I. I, I mean, one thing that I, uh, I want to say is that it's okay being on, offline because the protocol is very generous. I mean, the, the, the penalties for being online, offline sorry, are very low. So there's no problem for being offline. Uh, you can be uh, online 95 or 99% uh, a whole year and you are, and you are good. So um, don't, do, don't overkill. I mean, don't do HI, don't, don't automate things because you can be slash. So 
It's okay being a fly. No, no, no problem. It's no problem. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, one thing that I do that I find is quite good is, uh, do these come with Grafana? Yeah. Enabled? Yeah, so in Grafana, you can add the Telegram group as a, um, as a notification point, and you can set up an alert on, like, critical logs, so it sends you a Telegram message. I find that's, like, a really, really easy way to, to just to know when things are up. Paul from, from Lighthouse, thank you. Thanks for your help. Okay, next one. I'm just curious what your experience is if you have uh, like run on specifically a bit more constrained devices like the Raspberry Pi, like which of the implementations are the most efficient in those circumstances on ARM devices? On there, sorry? Um, like which of the node uh, softwares do you find run the most efficiently on ah, a device okay, like the Raspberry? Okay. Yeah, uh, guess it's very performant, it's very, it's very optimized. And uh, regarding consensus layer, uh, I would say Nimbus, because Nimbus uh, uses a very low RAM memory. It's amazing. And, but anyway, uh, pretty much, uh, besides uh, Ergon that you know that executes pretty much all the blockchain, all blocks, uh, and Besu and Teku that uh, are uh, Java-based and they are, they are a little heavier, uh, the other client, Prism, Lighthouse, Nimbus, Geth, never mind. We're running fine. I mean, yeah. Hi, uh, thank you very much. Love the talk. Love the work. Um, do you have any plans for saying like MVV Boost or anything like that for integration? Yeah, we are. We are. Uh, we already packaged made Boost, but um, we are a little concerned because uh, they are. Not every release, but they are uh, already censoring some transactions, and uh, we prefer to wait. It, sure. the, it, it works. I mean, uh, it works fine, and you can even uh, have a Raspberry Pi 3, maybe, or, or this kind of, of devices, because it's very light. But we are a little concerned uh, about uh, centralization and, and censoring, uh, and transaction censoring. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, I, are you cross-compiling when using no, the background? No, or just no, no. Uh, official binaries. Official binaries. Um, um, the only exception is Aragon, because they don't provide the binaries. Yeah. And sorry, one more last question. So no, I noticed that you are no using problem. Swap. How is that impacting the I/O on the on the boards? You know, um, the swap for the Raspberry Pi is uh, necessary because you know uh, eight gigabytes are very tight. And it's created on the on the USB SSD. So yeah, it's not the the it's, it's not uh, the better solution, but it's needed. So uh, yeah, it's something that uh, we need to to do. Okay. Any more questions? No. Yeah. Right there. Okay. There you go. On a, on a device like the ROX5, do you have any recommendations about the number of validators that it should should have? Is there a, a recommended hard, limit before you see yeah. CPU binding? Hard to say. Uh, we are running three, but I think that uh, it will be able to run a lot. I don't have a, a figure to, to give you, but I think that uh, a lot. I mean, yeah. Hey, thanks for your presentation. Yeah. I came a little late, so I'm not sure if that was discussed. Um, do you know if somebody working on an incentive program or protocol similar to Helium where um, individual stakers that can you know, prove that they're running in a location that doesn't have high density gets a little bit of incentive? No. I'm sorry, no. Okay, because that no. would be helpful for decentralization, I guess. I guess so, yes. But uh, I not uh, have an opinion about that because I don't, I don't know. So. Oh yeah, it's you know sometimes you, you you cannot answer all, but always a point to learn. Is there any other question? Yeah, right there. So for the Raspberry Pi four, you said you use SATA. If I'm not mistaken, with the compute Sorry? module, you use like SATA over US, over USB, right? That's your setup. Uh, USB. 
Yeah, yeah. But for the compute module with the I.O. board, you can actually connect it, connect, you, you can use NVMe as well. I don't uh, know if you've tried it out. You, you can, yeah, you can do, you can do Does that. Does that help with any of the performance issues? You've, or is mm, it like a, It's a very similar. I mean, it doesn't make a difference, I think. Well, if, if, the, if some of the performance issues are because of I.O. stuff, then it might help. Yeah, but uh, you, you are, um, you know, the, the USB 3 is the bottleneck here, so. No, but, so the compute module has, supports ah, NVMe. Ah, sorry, I, uh, sorry, sorry, yes. I uh, misunderstood. Uh, we, we didn't try uh, the computer model. No, we didn't try it. Uh, but uh, I guess it will be, will be better, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, one more there. We're running out of time, maybe one or two questions more. Just really quick, a follow up on the USB 3 thing. Do you have documented which USB adapters works and also which uh, USB 3 SSD modules uh, hard disk um, The best option from our experience is uh, an StarTech bridge, uh, which is a little uh, device that connects uh, this. It's a SATA to, to USB 3 that works very well. Uh, you can use, uh, use uh, portable USBs, uh, well, such as uh, Crucial or, or Samsung T5, T6, T7. Uh, T7, mm, you know, has a little uses, but uh, yeah, you you can uh, you can actually um, uh, use a, a lot of a lot of options. Uh, so it's difficult for us to to test everything. But uh, recommendation our recommendation is is that the bridge. Yes, it works well. Great. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, shared pool staking? Uh, we are very, uh, we are big fans of Rocket Bull. Uh, actually, uh, we are in contact with uh, uh, Joe Clapis from Rocket Bull. Uh, they are uh, running uh, Rocket Bull in the Rock Five uh, as well. And yeah, this is a, this is a way of lowering the 32 barrier uh, in a decentralized way. Yes, it's very nice. Uh, I am, we are big fans of, of Rocket Pool. So, yeah, we, we recommend that. We have time for one or maybe two questions. Uh, anyone? Nobody? Everything is clear? Sure. Uh, no, it's not in the, no, it's not uh, configurable. I was asking if you have the Grafana metrics no. just to show. Yeah. Mm, nope. It's uh, because the port of, you know, you have to connect to the 3000 port and we can't hear. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, no. Okay, so as I told you before, um, we are given a gift, uh, this raffle, so someone in here is going with something pretty interesting the Raspberry P4 for free, of course. So the winner is... Boom, and, boom, 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 boom. and just flash, prepare for, <laughs> uh, for And just lunch. flash and prepare something, sorry. Okay. We, are going to... we can see we are running a, a random number, no? It? Don't be but, tricky. Uh, we can see it in the screen. There are nine participants. And the Oscar goes to? Should all have been participating. And number two. Participating. Number two. And it's called? Arturo. Arturo. Arturo is gone, maybe? Arturo is not here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He went away for. Okay. So the next one is? We're going to, to run the number again. Eight. Number eight is? Fingers crossed if he's here. Uh, Alex. 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 Alex Matt. Ah, Alex Whoa. Winner. Applause for him. <laughs> so first, can I explain you, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Congrats. So um, uh, thank you, Fer thank you. and, thank and you. Diego. Thank you. 
Uh, it's been a pleasure to share this, uh, their knowledge and, and all of you this morning. I uh, just want to uh, remind you that we'll be uh, tomorrow downstairs at the booths uh, with our, well, you'll see perfectly, Ethereum on ARM, okay? And we're going to be there if you, I don't know, if this tonight comes up, any further question, we'll be there uh, the whole day, right? Yeah. Yeah. So thank you all, and I don't know if you want to add some words. Thank you. Just, just that. <laughs> thank okay. you for coming. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks really a lot. Thank you. Thank you.